Hi everyone and welcome to Code on Fire. This tutorial is the first in a series dedicated to C++. C++ is a programming language that adapts to various uses. It was designed in the 1980s to improve the C language and was initially called C with, with classes. Later, the incremental operator plus plus was added to the name to highlight the improvements made over C, uh, particularly object-oriented features. We'll be using Visual Studio because it is a full-fledged development environment, uh, not just a simple editor. Uh, this will allow us uh, not only to learn how to use C++, but also to develop real applications, gaining knowledge that can be applied to other programming languages as well. Furthermore, it already includes a C++ compiler, so we can start executing uh, code without additional installations. Let's get started. Open Visual Studio, create a new project, search for C++ and choose an empty project. Assign it a name and check this part. As you can see, the project is currently empty. Focus on the Resource Files folder. Right-click, select Add and add a new item C++ file. Rename it to Main. The first thing we need to add is include IOStream. By doing this, we are including a standard library that provides the necessary functionalities for input and output operations. Thus, it uh, allows us uh, to take uh, inputs, uh, produce outputs, uh, and also notify us uh, of any errors we might make uh, while writing the code. Clearly, this library is essential. Let's continue by writing this simple line of code, int main. In C++, int main is the declaration of the main function, essentially the entry point of our code. Just uh, like in the uh, in other languages, C++ requires uh, the declaration of the entry point to function properly. The int indicates uh, that the function will return as an integer value, which we will add later. Main is the name of the main function, and uh, we can tell it's uh, a function by the run brackets that indicate it. The brackets can contain arguments and to which parameters can be passed, allowing the function to achieve its purpose, but we'll see that later. Now let's move to a new line and add curly braces. These braces are used to delimit logical blocks of code, uh, resulting in greater code readability. Uh, the need to divide the code into blocks uh, can be driven by various reasons, uh, such as uh, defining functions by enclosing their body, delimiting the, the body of classes or uh, structures, and so on. We'll delve into these aspects later. Let's see how to get an output. This is the first essential step to making our code truly useful. Without an output, all executed code, even if written correctly, will be useless. For now, let's see how to display this phrase. Subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Apologize. This phrase is obviously not random. <laughs> okay. To do this, we'll write the following line of code inside the body of the main function within the curly braces. std cout subscribe to the channel. Let's analyze this line of code carefully. std is the abbreviation of the standard namespace. A namespace is in C++ is a kind of container that groups symbols like classes, functions and variables under a single name. It helps organize our code better and avoid name conflicts. For instance, you could have two functions with the same name in two different namespaces. If this happens, the compiler will know which one to use thanks to the uh, referenced namespace, thus avoiding conflicts. We'll soon uh, see how to use namespaces more efficiently. 
The symbol consisting of these double columns is called the scope resolution operator and is used to specify which namespace or class a name belongs to which can be used to indicate a function, a variable, and so on. In this case, we are using the scope resolution operator to access a member to the STD namespace, short for standard, specifying at the same time that the Cout belongs to the STD namespace. Here we have the insertion operator, it is used to send data, in this case uh, to the Cout object, thus our string, the text, through the insertion operator is sent to the standard output, which uh, in our case is the console. The text must be enclosed by in, um, in quotation marks, uh, this way it will be interpreted as a string. Finally, we have a semicolon. It is used to indicate the end of the statement. Let's move to a new line and write return 0. Uh, the keyword return is used to return a value, in this case 0, which we know is an integer. Uh, that's why we used int, which means integer, before main, the name of a function. If a program executes up uh, uh, to return 0, we can be sure that everything went well. Choosing 0 as the return value is poorly conventional. At this point, we are ready uh, to run the code. To do this, we can click on this icon or press F5. As we can see, the text string is printed. Let's add another line of code, std cout. Thank you for, um, for watching. This way we will get another text string as output as we can verify by running the code. As we can see, there are no spaces between the strings. We could add a space at the end of the first string like this. Let's run the code again. Uh, and this time we will have the space between the two strings. If instead we want to write the second string on a new line, we will write backslash n at this point, where n stands for a new line. This way, everything written after the new line will be printed on a new line. The backslash is the escape symbol, which we will get to know better later. As we can see, every time we needed to get an output, we had to call the std namespace. To avoid this, we can also insert a using directive that imports all the contents of a namespace. Therefore, before the beginning of the function, we write using namespace std. This way, it will not be necessary to call the namespace before each instruction. This could lead to a name conflict. We'll see later how to manage such situations best. Now let's see how to insert comments within the code. Comments are useful for various reasons. They make the code clearer by providing explanations on different parts of the code, facilitate team development and help maintain the project in the long term. To insert a comment, we use a double forward slash. In this part, we insert a comment, writing main function starts here. The double forward slash allows us to insert a single line comment. If we want to insert a multi-line comment, we can use a forward slash followed by an asterisk, write the comment over multiple lines and then close with an asterisk followed by a forward slash. Let's continue by seeing how to declare variables in C++. Variables are like containers that allow you to store, modify and access data. Each variable has a name, also called an identifier, and an assigned value. To declare a variable, uh, we can use uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, but not at the beginning of the name, and the underscore. 
To assign a value to it, uh, we'll use the equal sign. The assignment will always happen from left to right. And uh, once done, we can refer to a value simply by using the variable's name. We will see all the uses of uh, variables uh, as we go along. Let's declare a variable called uh, integer value and uh, assign it a value of 10. As we can see, we get uh, an error indicating, uh, uh, indicating uh, that the value types, uh, type is undefined. This happens because C++ is a, a typed uh, programming language. This means uh, we need to specify the type of value we are using, in this case an integer. Therefore, we need to write int before the variable's name, which is uh, short for integer. This way we will have defined the value type and no error will be returned. Let's end it all with a semicolon. Let's add a comment by writing this is an uh, integer variable. Now let's call the variable to get an output that will exactly match the value assigned uh, to the variable. So we write cout integer value and execute it, getting the value value 10 as output. Variables can be assigned different types of values. Let's see some of them. We have floating type values, which are numbers with decimal values. These are assigned to a variable by writing float. We'll call this variable float value and assign it a value of 4.6, for example. Let's also add a comment here. This is a floating variable. We have string type values, which consist of a string of text and are declared by writing string. We we'll call the variable string value and assign it a value that consists, for example, um, of the word hello. Insert the usual comment. Finally, we see boolean type values, uh, which can be either uh, true or false. We declare a variable by writing bool, bool value equal true, for example. Let's add a usual comment. This is a Boolean variable. We will see other types of variables later. For now, that's all. Don't miss the upcoming tutorials. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel.